What's up guys, welcome to That Creative Life and today I kind of want to talk about the Fuji X-T4. This isn't a review, this isn't a, for a true first looks, this is a first impressions. What I've thought using this camera, I'll let you see the video, might throw in some photos I've taken. I'm just kind of talking about the Fuji ecosystem and the pros and the cons thus far. Having been a Fuji shooter before and again currently. So let's roll that intro and let's get started. Okay, so right off the bat, Fuji lenses are more affordable. Fuji bodies are more affordable because they're crop sensor. They are on the lower end. Now you can get the high end Fuji medium format cameras, which are ridiculous. But as far as like their crop sensor, good cameras that in my opinion can easily keep up with a lot of the full frames out there or all the full frames out there they're not as expensive as the full frame cousins so that is a big win and plus the lenses are incredibly sharp very nice this is their cheapest lens i believe uh, that's actually fuji branded and it looks incredible i mean you see the quality of the video we're sh sh currently shooting at f 2.8 and it can go all the way down to f2 actually let's put it down to f2 now I apologize if the exposure changed because I'm using an ND, so I'm kind of just spinning, hoping it looks somewhere the same. I'm not using any of the little histograms or anything on the camera, just kind of eyeballing it. So <clears throat> it should be fairly close, at least. But regardless, you can see how sharp it is. You can see the way it renders the out of bound, out of focus backgrounds. It does a great job. The XT4 is a very small camera. It's probably half the weight of the OSR, and has a lot more functionality, in my opinion. The lenses are half the size. I had the 70 to 200 2.8 with IS for the Canon. I now have the 50 to 140 2.8 with IS for the Fuji, and it's literally half the weight. It's saving my back and my wallet so much money and pain because it's just smaller, more compact. It fits in a smaller bag. It's easier to carry around. I'm more likely to take it with all my lenses than I was before. Before I would just half the time take one camera, one lens and got what I got. But now I don't mind taking everything because it's a small little setup. So diving into the different aspects of this camera, ergonomics. The grip is a little small. I do have big hands, so that is one little irksome thing. Do wish the grip was a little deeper, although it does have the new battery, so the grip is a little bigger, just not quite where I need it to be. But the battery life has greatly improved. I love that there's a flip out screen. I love that there's a tally light so I know when it's recording. All these things make for a really pleasant camera experience. And that's the whole point of Fuji to me is it's just easier. And so let's dive into the photo side of things. It does 15 frames per second, <laughs> raw, and JPEG. You can set the JPEGs to be different film simulations while they're all shooting just raw. And it makes for some excellent stills. 26 megapixel is more than enough and on a crop sensor, I've always been worried if oh, the picture's good enough. Well, you tell me. I have managed to get some killer, killer landscape photos. I haven't gotten a chance to test it for portraits yet, which is why this is just like a first thoughts, not even a first impressions video. Hello, you're in a YouTube video. Yeah, because I'm shooting one right now. I'm totally gonna leave this part in because this is gonna be funny. Let me call you back, babe. I love you too. Bye. By the way, you are gonna get to meet her very soon. One month before the wedding, I'm gonna introduce her to y'all. And we're gonna do like a road up to the wedding thing. It's, you know, you, you got to, you gotta remember those memories. Anyways, 26 megapixel. I thought it wasn't gonna be good enough. You saw the pictures, they look incredible. You can crop in, it still looks really good. I mean, this camera for stills is probably the best stills camera I've ever used. And I've used 60 Mark II, the USR, the Panasonic G7, the Sony a7 III, the Sony a5100, the Sony a6000, Nikon D3300. I've gone through a lot of cameras, not to mention the cameras I use at work, which would be like the GH5 and then some older Nikons. But I love this camera for stills. I think it looks incredible. and. Those film simulations when you shoot JPEGs, half the time you'll get a JPEG straight out of the camera where you don't even need to edit it. It's just ready to go because it looks that good. Now for the video, 4K 60, 1080 to, uh, 240. 
I mean, spec heavy. It's got Ibis. It has that stabilization to make it just uh, that much more stable and better looking. It's got log. It's got H.265 and H.264. It shoots DCI 4K, so you get that widescreen aspect without losing any quality. I mean, there's literally, it's so stacked as far as features and specs go. I don't understand why everybody's not using this camera. It, it baffles me. It is single-handedly probably the greatest camera I've ever had the pleasure of using. And I can safely say that after about like two weeks. So I'm excited to see where it goes. I just wanted to make this short little like thoughts video, kind of let y'all know what's up. If you've been looking around for cameras or if you're trying to decide if you want to get into the Fuji system, you'll thank me later, just do it. I promise you, with the affordability of the lens, the usefulness of the cameras, the results, the quality, I mean, it's its just kind of a no-brainer at this point. I don't, again, I don't know why everybody doesn't use Fuji. It's not full frame, so what? It's great in little lot, great autofocus. There's plenty of wide angle lenses that are very affordable that get you similar ranges, so just do it. Jump in. I promise you, you won't regret it. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. Don't forget to love that creative life. I'll see you next time. Bye.